A few weeks ago, I showed you how to install Windows 11 on an absolute potato. So this week to follow that up, I'm gonna show you how to do it on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, this should pass the Windows 11 system requirements. <laughs> Stay tuned. Do you like saving money? Of course you do. You need to check out today's sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals has a free browser extension available to make saving money online even easier. When you're on a website, just click on the browser extension and it shows you all the deals available for that website. This browser extension will automatically search through all of the most up-to-date coupon codes to find you the best savings based on what you currently have in your cart. Check out this deal I found on Foster & Grant glasses. I love these glasses, but end up breaking a pair at least once a year. Maybe I should buy two. So, follow the link in the description below and get the free Slick Deals browser extension and start saving money today. Unless you don't like saving money. Is the Cortex chip on the approved CPU list? All right, we need to start this video out with a disclaimer apparently. I'm going to state this as clearly as I can to avoid this video being removed from YouTube like the last one was. This guide is only showing you how to install Windows on a Raspberry Pi. It does not in any way constitute software piracy. You are still required to activate Windows with a valid license, the same as you would with any other system. Now, with that said, about a year ago, I heard about a group that got Windows 10 working on the Raspberry Pi. I never covered it because, honestly, it really didn't work very well. There was no Wi-Fi, there was no sound, and I don't even think the Ethernet worked at the time that I looked at it. Not only that, but the performance was Awful. So when a subscriber recently mentioned in the comments that he had a Raspberry Pi running Windows 11, my first thought was, that must not run very good at all. So I did a quick Google search to see if the process was just as complicated and if it was just as bad as Windows 10. And to my surprise, it not only was pretty easy, but it ran a lot better. Now, just for full disclosure, before we start, not everything works. There's still no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. There's no driver support for the GPU. So you're gonna be stuck with basic Microsoft drivers for video, and that means there's gonna be no HDMI audio. However, the audio jack on the Pi does work, and Ethernet works as well. Now, before we get started, there is a few things you're gonna need. For one, obviously, is a Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, they're not easy to come by nowadays. When you can find one, they're insanely expensive. Now, for this guide, I highly recommend using a four or eight gig Pi 4. However, this will work on a Pi 3 as well, but it'll likely be really slow. I didn't test it on a Pi 3, but if you do, make sure to mention in the comments how it runs. I'm actually kind of curious. For this video, I'm using an 8 gig Pi 4, and when I bought this originally, it was about $80. But before filming this, I searched online, and these things sell for a little over $200 now. And I just gotta say, don't pay that much. Those people are just scalping pies, and to be honest with you, if you buy from them, it's just gonna make the problem worse. Just keep an eye out for when new stock comes in and try to get one from an authorized dealer. When they're in stock, they're selling for the regular price. But the problem is, is the scalpers buy them up really quick, so you gotta be on the ball. With that said, hit the like button, because every time you hit the like button, a scalper loses his eBay account. You don't need to have a cooler on your Pi in order to make this work. However, if you do install an active cooler, then you can overclock the Pi, and it makes it run a lot better. I already know that this Pi here is capable of running at 2.3 gigahertz, and I determined that way ahead of time, so I would make sure that you check what your Pi is capable of, before you actually go and follow this guide. I did a video a while back showing how to overclock a Pi, and I'll go ahead and leave that video in the description below if you'd like to follow it. Now the next thing you're gonna need is an SSD drive with a USB adapter. I've got a few different options right here, but I highly recommend going with an SSD. I've searched online and did a little bit of research beforehand, and I found that you actually can use a USB thumb drive or an SD card, but the performance is gonna be really bad. Now what I'm using for this 
is a regular M2 USB adapter because honestly, I'm kind of running out of two and a half inch drives and I had an M2 available that I could use for this. But you can also use a two and a half inch drive with an adapter. I'll go ahead and leave a link to both of these adapters in the description below if you'd like to pick yourself up one. So finally, you're also gonna need an SD card loaded with Raspberry Pi OS. I'm not gonna go into how to create this because honestly, I've done it several times in the past in other videos and you can always go back and watch those. But just go get the Raspberry Pi Imager and flash Pi OS onto an SD card. Now, let's get this thing hooked up and I'll show you how to get Windows 11 on it. All right, now that we have everything hooked up, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. There's an easy way that takes a little bit of time, and then there's a hard way that doesn't take as much time, but it requires a lot more labor. So for this one, we're gonna go with the easy way. It takes more time, but it's a lot easier to follow, and it allows you to install Windows 11 directly from the Raspberry Pi itself without using a Windows computer. We're gonna do this through a script called WOR Flasher available on GitHub. And like I said before, this is not software piracy. This script downloads unmodified files directly from Microsoft's update servers. It still requires you to have a valid Windows 11 license. Now, stick your SD card in and let's get into Pi OS and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do once you get into Raspberry Pi OS is go ahead and open up a browser and go ahead and go to this website right here. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this in the description below so you can just follow that link if you want to. Scroll all the way down to the instructions down here and these are the two commands that we're concerned with right now. So the first one we want, the git clone command and this will actually download everything for us onto our system. So go ahead and copy that. And then once you have that copy, go ahead and open up a terminal window and from your terminal window, just paste this in and hit enter. Now, of course, I've already downloaded this, so it gave me an error, but it should download it for you. And then after you do that, the next command we wanna run is this one right here. So go ahead and copy this. And then from terminal, just go ahead and paste it like you did before and hit enter, and it should fire up the program itself. It takes a second, and this is what you get right here. So let's get some of these windows out of the way here. All right, so it gives you a couple different choices here. You can either go Windows 10 or Windows 11, but for this, we're gonna go Windows 11. And you can also choose to put it on a Pi 4 or a Pi 2 or 3. But like I said before, I highly recommend doing this on a Pi 4. It's just not worth doing this on a Raspberry Pi 3. It'll be really slow. And then once you make your choices here, go ahead and hit next. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and pick your language here and hit next. And at this point, I should have already had this plugged in. I'm not sure why I didn't, but we're gonna go ahead and do it now. So go ahead and plug your drive into your Raspberry Pi, and I'll meet you back in Raspberry Pi OS. So now that we're in here, go ahead and hit the refresh key. And as you can see here, I have a 240 gig SSD. We're gonna go ahead and select that and hit next. And then on this screen, it gives you a couple options. You can actually edit the config file right here. It's probably not a great idea editing everything below this line right here, but if you'd like to overclock it, this is the time you do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And the easiest way to do it is go ahead and click this link. It'll give you a couple examples of some overclocks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this one right here and copy it, then go ahead and close that. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste it right here into our config file. And like I said, I already know the overclock that this Pi can take. You don't necessarily want to follow my settings because my settings are specific to my Pi. Go ahead and watch the video that I linked below if you'd like to overclock your Pi. If you don't, then you can always skip this portion right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I know over voltage is 10. I run mine at 2300. And for GPU frequency, it doesn't even matter because there's no GPU drivers for this anyway. So I just usually set these two right here and then hit the flash button. So at this point, it's gonna take a long time to get to the next step. And that's because it has to download everything that it needs from Microsoft's web servers. So go ahead and let it finish. You could be an hour or more, and I'll see you back when it's done. All right, now we're at the next point. As you can see, we have this prompt on the screen. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see what it says. All right, so once you get to the next spot, all it does is show this little prompt. All this does is give you instructions on what you need to do next. And essentially all it is is shutting your Pi down and pulling your SD card out. So we're gonna go ahead and hit close right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and shut down our Pi. Just go ahead and click on log out here. 
give it a second and then push shut down. Okay, now that the pie is shutting down, just go ahead and hit the power button or unplug it if you don't have a power button like I do. And the next step is just to pull the SD card out of the pie itself. Now at this point, all we need to do is fire it back up again, but there's a step you have to do right away. So once we hit the power button, go ahead and hit the escape key right here because we need to set some settings up in the new UEFI BIOS that's been installed onto the SD card. Okay, now we're in the firmware here. All we have to do is go down to Device Manager. Go ahead and hit Enter. And then from here, you want to go all the way down to Raspberry Pi Configuration. Go ahead and hit Enter. And then the next step is to go down to Advanced Configuration. Click Enter again, and you'll see right here where it says Limit RAM to 3 gigabytes. Obviously, we want to take advantage of all 8 gigs that we have available. So we're going to go ahead and hit Enter and disable this function right here. And then from this point, you can go ahead and exit out. And then go ahead and hit Yes to save changes. Hit Exit again and then go ahead and hit continue. And at this point, hit enter to reset. All right, now the Pi's rebooting and at this point, it should boot off of the SSD drive and start installing Windows 11. Now, this is another time that's gonna take a really long time for it to finish. This could take in excess of 45 minutes to get past this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and I will see you once Windows 11 is installed. So. It's logging in right now for the last time. We're finally in Windows 11. So like I said, it did take almost down to the minute, 45 minutes in order to install. So now that it's set up, let's jump in and see how Windows 11 runs on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so as you can see, here's Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi. We're gonna go ahead and hit start here. We're gonna go into settings. And as you can see, it's not the fastest thing in the world. It is a little bit sluggish. But that's to be expected because, you know, we are literally running this on a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, which, you know, isn't the fastest computer in the world. We're going to go ahead and hit About here. And from About, you can see that we're running a Cortex A72 processor at 2.3 gigahertz. We have 8 gigs of RAM. Looks like it's using about 512 megs for the video memory, which that's fine. Like I said, we don't have any 3D support anyway, so it really doesn't matter. And if you come down here, you can see that we're running the OS 22000.318. And I'm pretty sure that if you go into Windows Update here, you should be able to download the latest update to Windows 11. And yeah, here's the latest feature updates and things of that nature. And in fact, it's already downloading them automatically, so it's probably gonna want me to restart it soon. But we're not gonna do that because this is about all we need to see. So as you can see, Windows 11 absolutely runs on a Raspberry Pi. Inevitably, someone in the comments is gonna say that just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. So, should you do it? The way I figure it is if you own a Raspberry Pi, it probably means that you like to play with stuff like this because honestly, this is for all sakes and purposes playing. I can't find any real legitimate reason why you would want to do this other than just to have fun and say you did it. Because here's the thing, Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi, even a Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM, isn't fast. Now, don't get me wrong, it's way faster than Windows 10 was, but as a desktop replacement, it's definitely not. Absolutely the slowest unsupported hardware you can find is going to run faster in Windows 11, but it's definitely not as fun as this project. With that said, if you like Raspberry Pi projects, check out this video where I assemble what I believe to be the ultimate Raspberry Pi based handheld retro console, the Pi Boy DMG. Have a great day.